What's going on guys, Hardware Junkies here, and today we're going to be bringing you a video on how to get your PlayStation 4 DualShock 4 controller connected to your Windows PC. You can either do it via Bluetooth or with the USB cable. Obviously the USB cable is a little uh, easier to do, but we're going to do it with the Bluetooth, so I'll show you how to do that. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to download a program from the link down in the description. It's called Input Mapper. You're going to have to use that in order to get your PlayStation controller to register in the PC. So we're going to click on that and then we're just going to go down to where it says Input Mapper down here. So we can pick 1.6.10. Um, the version will probably be a little bit different. So uh, just pick the latest one um, whenever you're looking at it. So we're going to pick this one and we'll click on that. It's going to take us to this page here, and then we can click on download. Accept the terms. You can donate if you'd like. Um, you don't have to, but you can. So then we're just going to go ahead and click on download one more time. Then we can go ahead and save it into the folder of your choice. Once that finishes downloading, you can go into the folder that you saved it to. So we put that into our downloads and it's right in here. So we're gonna click on Input Mapper. Give that a double click. Once the warning pops up, you click on Yes. We'll X out of that. Then we can choose where we wanna install it. Um, you guys can usually just leave it in the default. I'm gonna install mine onto a different hard drive. So we'll select that. And I need to create a subfolder real quick. Right here we have Input Mapper, so we're just going to select that. And then we accept the license terms, and then go ahead and click on Install. It's going to go ahead and install onto your computer then. And then once it's done, you can just click on Finish. Then the next thing you're going to want to do is we can close out of this window here. You're going to want to go into the Bluetooth settings on your computer. If you're not connecting to Bluetooth, then you can just skip this step and go ahead in the video to the next step. But anyone who wants to connect via Bluetooth, you're going to want to pay attention to this part of the video. So in order to do this, you're going to want to go to add Bluetooth or other device. But before you do that, you need to grab your PlayStation controller and you want to hold down the PlayStation button and the share button at the same time. So you'll push them both down and then you'll see the light will start to flash and once it does that, that means you have it in pairing mode. So then you can go ahead and click on add Bluetooth or other device. We're going to click on Bluetooth. This is how you do it on Windows 10. It's pretty similar on any other device uh, version of Windows, I should say. But um, that's how you're going to do it on Windows 10 wireless controller will pop up, you can click it, and then it's going to go ahead and sync up. You can see it's setting up the device. So we can X out of our Bluetooth menu now, and we'll just let that set up. And once it's done, that'll go away. Device is ready. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and open up the program we installed. So we want to get Input Mapper. If it's not on your desktop, you can just search it down here. We'll launch that up. Once the program launches, let it load real quick. And then you can then hit the home button on your controller so that it'll connect to the computer. And then it'll enter exclusive mode and you can click it one more time so that it'll connect. And there we go. Now you have your PlayStation controller connected to your computer. You can actually use the uh, trackpad on the controller. As you can see, that's what I'm using as a mouse right now. And then when you go into games, you can just use the controller just like normal. So it's pretty easy to do. Um, it used to be a lot more complicated in my older video, but it's a lot easier to do now. So once you're in Input Mapper, you can actually do adjustments to everything. So if you wanted to change the settings around, you can go in here and um, in here you can change if you want it to start with Windows automatically or not. Um, I usually don't do that because I'm not always playing a game, but if uh, 
you want it to start up, you can enable it there. Uh, you can go here for other stuff. Um, nothing really important there. The most important part is going to be profiles because this is where you can actually map out the controls. So if you click on new profile, you can actually go ahead and change these settings. So say we wanted to change the start button, you can map it right to a key on your keyboard or you can map it to any button on the Xbox controller. Um, essentially what's happening is when we are using the PlayStation controller, this program's uh, changing it and putting it in as an Xbox controls because that's what Windows can understand. So you can map any of these buttons on the controller to whatever you want, and then you can save them as separate profiles that can be switched to right up here. Um, you can change it to whatever you need. And that's about it. Um, that's all you'll need to know. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, you can subscribe. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you next time.